So on top of the trailer we got earlier, we also got a ton of intel about the changes coming with the Pacific. So you can already start to envision how the map is going to play out. So they do have a bunch of lore stuff in here. We'll go ahead and skim through the important changes. On December 8th, your legendary journey of the Warzone Pacific begins with season one of Call of Duty Vanguard and Warzone Pacific with a brand new map built on learning from the community. So a bunch of changes are gonna take place and I know a lot of you guys are gonna like them because reading through and skimming through, I know I already like a lot of the changes. So there's the Naval Arsenal, which kinda looks a little bit different. You got the areas where you're gonna be able to go down and up and then you got this. This almost looks a little bit like uh, Rebirth, a little bit, the, the kinda how it, the layout is. You'll be able to get up top here, maybe jump across, there's buildings across. So you can see this building's about five stories, one, two, three, four, five. Um, so that's kind of how that part looks and then we got the couple different hangars here And it looks like congested a little bit. So there's a lot of close fighting, but there can also be long-range engagements, which is pretty nice uh, Industrial docks. So this kind of looks like shipment uh, pretty much it is shipment, right? So we're gonna have the different crates um, It is a little bit different than the one we currently have in Vanguard There's not as many hop-up spots, but they do have this it's this one's kind of more like the modern warfare version So pretty cool. Uh, we're gonna have that obviously that's gonna be familiar with this, some buildings around the edge Then we also have runway which obviously as a runway. It's kind of wide open um, not quite as like D done the way that we did in Verdansk, so it's kind of just dirt a little bit of stuff here Not really much cover in the way so this could be one of those areas where you can kind of get trapped um, They do have the ruins which obviously as it says this looks a lot like village I know there's a POI called village This kind of does look like that spawn area where you kind of go in to village from that map village um, So pretty interesting phosphate mines. What the heck is this? So this actually has a ton of elevation because it's dug out and you can see kind of how low this area goes. Um, and then it kind of goes all the way up to here to this building. You have the rail lane for mounting, strafe mounting or whatever. Uh, we also have peak, which kind of looks like a building for summit. It's kind of all the different areas. Hopefully you'll be able to climb these rocks like they alluded to in the, in the trailer. Um, but this also looks like another uh, Modern Warfare map, not uh, Modern Warfare, like Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare 3, I don't really remember, but it kind of does look a little bit like that. We got Beachhead, uh, which kind of has a lot of open land. You kind of got access to the water. Wonder if you'll be able to swim or you just die as soon as you touch the water. And then you got a couple different buildings here. So interesting there, River Village. Um, no, it does not look like Village Village that uh, was in Call of Duty, like a Call of Duty multiplayer map. Um, but there is some little water here, but it looks kind of shallow. So maybe you could just run through that. Clear Water Lagoon. Um, okay, there's a little bit of water in here. And then this does kind of look like from Blackout. Um, this little tower. Obviously, towers all look the same. But it's kind of on a pier. You kind of go up and you kind of have access to it where there was zombie spawns uh, in that map. Then Caldera Terminal. So this is probably the biggest building in here. It's about six or seven stories. I don't know if you can go all the way to the top, maybe just to the railing, because you can see this pulls up here, and then maybe there's a little zip right here that you'll be able to walk into. So pretty cool. And then this one kind of looks like train station overall, like in terms of the, the way it's built, even though it's a terminal, um, it kind of does look like train station. Um, agricultural center. This kind of looks like that low area. You can see the bridge in the background. We have a little water thing up top. And then this building in here where you're able to loot. I haven't really seen any buy stations. So maybe they're not spawned in um, for the map. Oh my God. And then they have Shark's Lair Submarine Pen. That looks a little bit different than Sub Pen that we have in uh, Caldera or in that we have in Vanguard. So that's quite a bit different. Um, and this looks like the aircraft map. I can't remember it from Black Ops 2. Um, but yeah, th that it kind of looks like that. It gives those vibes, even though this is water and all that type of stuff. Caldera Power Plant. Damn. So they got all kinds of stuff. This looks like the Cold War map uh, outbreak. It looks like a little area where there's like a the array tower or whatever the case is. A lot of green, a lot of trees. Um, so thin, they're not really gonna be able to provide a lot of cover, but they could definitely be used for mounting, it looks like, but we'll kind of see how that. Caldera Capital City. This also looks like a blackout area. This looks like the train area from blackout. At least this building does to me, where it's kind of like almost in a U shape a little bit and has an enclosed space. Pretty good, Royal Cabana Resort. Oh my God, this looks like that other map from Black Ops 1. Damn, they are bringing out, like, at least the influence, it gives me those vibes. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you feel like this gives you those same vibes or, nah, it doesn't look like that. And then we also have, uh, now we have the playlist. So outside of Caldera, 
The Vanguard integration, all operators, weapons, and personalization content are coming on December 8th. Um, so everything that's in Vanguard will be added to the Warzone map. Um, so that includes the 38 weapons plus the 40. It ends up being 40 because there's going to be two in the battle pass. Um, it's part of season one at tier 15, tier 31, like they normally do. You're going to get all the, the 12 operators, the calling cards, emblems, everything you'll be able to use in um, Warzone. Uh, Vanguard Royale, explore all new content with dogfighting. And this is the forced uh, Vanguard content. So when you go in there, you're going to be able to do the dogfighting or whatever, but your loadouts and all the weapons will be specifically only Vanguard. So you're not going to be able to mix and match. I'm still a little bit unclear what they're going to do with perks. Hopefully that is fully explained. And then available to all players on December 9th, uh, with Vanguard players gaining exclusive access on the 8th, Caldera Vanguard Royale, that's kind of what we explained. There are two major differences between Vanguard Royale and the traditional. The new vehicles and dogfighting, a focus on the weapons, and the circle collapse changes in-game events and more. Um, so that's the part that I didn't touch on yet. Um, times of the circle collapses are altered to offer a different pace of play, hopefully faster, especially with dogfighting and overhead. Also expect an in-game event at each circle collapse, bombing runs, um, different items, both with Caldera's overworld and contract reward. Rebirth Island is still going to be there. It's not going anywhere. Uh, while it's closed, if you don't own Vanguard and you only play the larger uh, Verdansk map, um, you still get access to Rebirth Island for those 24 hours until the Pacific is integrated in. Finer points of innovation in addition to the Warzone experience. So these are going to be a lot of the changes that I think are going to make the experience feel different. Some you're going to like, some you're probably not going to like just because you don't like change. But with this, it's almost expected. So drop back in ready for combat. So the Gulag now gives you more than a second chance at victory. When Warzone Pacific drops, any player who wins a Gulag will drop back in with the weapon or weapons, lethals given to them. So this is kind of what they did from Iron Trials, a little bit of a test. Those who survived the Iron Trials mode, this is where this feature was first tested. Oh damn, I'm ahead of the curve. May know a pro strategy involving loadout conservation. Any ammo and remaining equipment carries over between the Gulag and you redeploy deal with the enemy efficiently and you will have more at your disposal back in caldera loadout items and field upgrades here's some significant changes so dead silence is being nerfed um so it probably won't last as long you'll still probably not hear audio because obviously what would be the point but hopefully the the duration won't last as long so you'll still be able to make those flank plays you'll just have to be a little bit smarter with it or maybe it doesn't reset when you get a kill i don't know Stopping power rounds are completely gone. Good. Th those never belonged in the game. Uh, obviously, you know, they're there to close that skill gap, make it a little bit uh, easier for bad players to get easy kills and good players to get easy kills. Pretty much anyone get easy kills, but imbalanced in a gunfight. In addition to detailing those exact changes, Raven Software looked closely at various equipment pieces, such as nerfs to stuns and to heartbeat sensors. They also took another look at dual wielding melee weapons, the Cali sticks and the size to give justice to all ghosts who lived a second uh, life too short during the haunting. Obviously, that was the main thing. They're aware of it. You abuse those mechanics, they will get broken. We even talked about it when we did our spectating the haunting event. Um, we talked about how broken they were. And then obviously... It is a result of their their data as well. It shows that they're way too broken. The results, expect the aforementioned equipment and weaponry to be adjusted to be less potent in Warzone, along with gun budding no longer being a primary method of attack on Caldera. So probably be like five melees getting nerfed. People complained about that, the two hit melee, because of the critical or super melee um, that you would get. It, it's good that they got changed. So now people are gonna have to fight in a first person shooter. I know it's kind of a foreign concept for some, but it is the one that makes sense. Another change involves loadout drop markers. So just like they did with the, the recent um, uh, flashback event, you're not able to buy a loadout until the first loadout drops in. And this is so, to eliminate people getting their guns too quickly and people to kind of be on an even playing field and to focus on getting floor loot versus now, a lot of people just push to get that loadout as quick as possible. Now you'll have to kind of loot up for those first five or six minutes then the free loadout comes in along with the opportunity to buy a loadout. So maybe you get enough money by then, you can actually get UAVs right off the bat instead of waiting to get that free loadout. Along with these nerfs, several lethal and uh, tactical equipment pieces will see much needed buffs. Most lethal equipment will deal more damage. 
So probably forcing people to use EOD. Uh, while the snapshot grenade will see its effective radius increase, the stem will also apply slight movement boost. So maybe you use a stem with the dead silence to get extra boost. And the decoy grenade will pack rubber bullets that deal enough damage to pester enemies. So you'll actually just get hit um, from that and you'll just get hit markers. So that could be good with the perk that's gonna highlight people because it's gonna deal some damage. Uh, so it could be kind of interesting since that's a tactical and tacticals aren't generally gonna do uh, damage, but that kind of works with that. So gas mask and explosive canisters. Gas mask won't interrupt as many actions as they did previously, making it easier to pull your mask off or on as well as plating up or reloading a weapon while getting out of the circle collapse, but still always favoring the combat advantage to those inside the circle. So you're gonna have some kind of mechanic, they tweaked it, but it's not gonna be like, oh, I can't fire my weapon. Yeah, that was so damn annoying. Obviously, it's part of the mechanics, but they're going to be taking a look at those. Gas mask may offer a modicum of protection against gas canisters, a brand new item developed by High Moon Studios. If these canisters explode, they release the same noxious vapors as those comprising the circle collapse, albeit within a smaller radius. So you can actually blow up an area and then force people to cough, and then you'll know where they're at. So it can be used like that, I guess. After picking up one in Caldaria, try lighting the fuse and throwing a canister or clipping it onto an ascender to send a nice little gift to someone who's overstayed their welcome on the high ground. Oh, wow, that is crazy. To fish up campers, you throw that up top, it goes up, and then they, if they don't have a gas mask, they're gonna die. That's crazy. Alternatively, since it requires both hands to carry, simply shooting someone carrying it or dropping one you're carrying, stepping out of the blast radius and firing at it would make it effective during a few moments in, uh, so it's very specific. Shallow water, okay. While operators aren't getting their sea legs in Caldera, so you're not going to be able to swim, they are now able to wade through shallow... Oh, no, you can wade through shallow water seen in areas like Lagoon. Walking into water makes it harder to see footsteps, even to those operators with tracker equipped. Crouch in knee-high water, and you'll gain the effect of cold-blooded. But you cannot go prone. Okay, so you're not going to drown yourself, but you can crouch. Water's that shallow. Speaking of science, fire-based equipment now causes smoke when it hits the water. Adding a new layer of tactics when traversing through open, shallow pools. Contracts and public events. During a match, squads can find new contracts to complete, such as a supply drop contract, which airlifts a valuable crate onto the map for anyone to pick up, but only has its exact location revealed by the con. So you'll probably see like the airplane fly in, maybe a little bit of smoke, but obviously on the map, you'll have it marked. Another is a big game bounty, which targets the operator with the highest kill count, but only once per game. Obviously, we've seen that with the regular bounty, so it's going to specifically target that. Known as a top secret contract is uh, one could expect redacted until you pick it up, but comes with a great reward compared to a standard loot. With Okay, so there's going to be a redacted contract that's random RNG. You're going to walk up and it's going to have one of the different things that they have here. As for public events, um, they also have restocks, resurgence uh, from Rebirth Island, which is kind of cool. Uh, in addition to cast drops events, which may have seen during the Operation Flashback, plenty of those. There are also rumors of redacted weapon crates, which can appear around the island, which contain the coveted redacted weapon blueprints seen in Verdansk, and an armament extraction from the meta-forward galaxy brains of the studio's gunsmith gurus. So basically, they're going to go and probably copy whatever the meta loadouts are, and they're going to throw them in there so you're protected, um, especially if you don't have stuff leveled. That could be a good way to go. Be sure to check out Closer to Season 1 with Raven Software patch notes and other important fine detailed updates as well as Beanox for anything related to PC changes. So we have uh, as part of the Season 1, Ricochet and Deadshade will deploy a new internally developed kernel level driver, which is kind of what we've already known about for a while. This will allow players to focus more on the fun new offerings in Warzone Pacific um, as fights unfair play with a new anti-cheat security initiative. So cool. I'm excited for some of the changes and to find out some of the other subtle changes. I do not know. It wasn't in here. Nobody knows if console will get FOV when it comes to Warzone because it does have it in Vanguard. That's the same engine. Buffed IW8 engine when it integrates. Are those going to change? Are we keeping the perks? They've been very specific about some of the changes um, that aren't included in here. Obviously, stopping power, it's not a field upgrade. So if they remove it and then Dead Silence works like Vanguard, which it does have it, even though it does have Ninja Footsteps or whatever they're called, Dead Silence, um, it's going to be interesting. 
I am excited for it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, learned something new. If you did, please do me a favor, hit the like button. If you want to find your way back, subscribe with notifications on. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.